this is the Red All Over Show with me, Joe Beardsall, Alan Smith, Andy Simcox and Josh Atherton. Uh, give the show a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got 1,700 and uh, about 20, I think now. So if we can get to 1,740 by the end of this week, that'd be lovely. So 50. Um, so please subscribe if you haven't already. We're here to talk a bit about, well, a little bit about Blackpool real quick after the weekend. Um, obviously, you've heard, hopefully, seen Big Kev's comments um, after the 1 0 defeat at Blackpool, if you've not, worth a watch. Also, have a watch as blog as well, as vlog, because I did a little vlog thing. I've never done it before, so we always like to get your feedback read. So have a watch and let us know whether you thought it was good or not, or whether I shouldn't bother again. <laughs> um, gents, not to beat around the bush, it were it were pretty dreadful on Saturday. It weren't a good one. Um, let's just get some quick thoughts on it, and, and then we can sort of finish off the show, hopefully, on a more positive note. Looking forward to, to Forest a little bit. Um Andy, what did you think to it, mate? I mean, just no rhythm, didn't really get it all together. Big Kev kind of summed it up really well in saying that we just, you know, we were just passing it back, pass it back didn't really know what we wanted to do with it. I think it's a, a, a great change from last season. And I, I don't understand, I don't understand so much why. You can change personnel, but you shouldn't be changing your style. Well, we, we've said for a while that we're going to bring a man we bring managers in that will maintain the same sort of style. I don't understand where our style is at the minute, I'm afraid. I don't get what the plan is. We don't seem to press. We don't attack with pace. We don't attack with speed. We don't pass and move. And I, I, I just, I, I, I'm at a loss to know what we're actually what we're actually doing. It's a very, very hard watch at the minute. We look vulnerable at times at the back. Other times we've looked all right. We look vulnerable. We, we, we look out for it in centre midfield, but players aren't passing and they're moving to receive it back enough for me. And up front, you know, we, we've we've got we've got I think one of the best strikers in this division up there, and it's wasted because we're not getting the ball to him properly, in good enough positions all the time. You know, he's having to create things himself, Corley, and you know he created a couple, and it it, it, it nearly nearly drew his level right, you know, right at the death. Um, but it, it, it's the plan and the organisation, the players. To me, and you know, this is all about opinions. Into other people might think entirely differently. To me, the players don't seem to know what he wants them to do. I'm not sure, and that's how it feels to me. I don't understand what they're trying to do. So it was a no. It it, it weren't great, but you know, it's past. Let, let's hope again for the Wednesday. You know. Yeah, I mean, it was it was difficult, weren't it? Sorry, Reg, you might have noticed I'm quite a sweaty mess tonight. I've just actually come from Oakwell playing football with, with gang and. Uh, Somehow managed to survive taking Joe Lyman out, to be honest. <laughs> and also I mean, a cheeky, cheeky comment saying that he that went down soft. Again. <laughs> Thought we were going to get back. Like, I was going to say thank you, Mr. Bezos, for uh, getting me to go to Blackpool at the weekend. <laughs> I'm still, look, I'm still drinking to nullify the pain of that defeat. Oh, what have I told you, you know about what, I've said elsewhere, Al. Um, he's a wrong one, and I was devastated for you, Al. Absolutely devastated. He gets you to go. It encourages you to. I can. I'll tell you. You can come wheels. Come wheels, Al. There's room for you, Al. And then a few days before, no, they're in Tal. We haven't got room. You'll have to make your own way there. To you, to you, Alan Smith. Talk sports, Alan Smith, and that's how you're treated. Shameful, Al. Can I say credit to the East Dean Reds? It was a yeah. great day out. Yeah, fantastic. But on the day, to be honest, conceding from our throwing. It's unacceptable, lads. It really is unacceptable. We should be clearing our lines. We shouldn't be getting a goal going from our throwing. Either get to play and let it off it upfield, straight down. You know, I know what they're doing. Straight down line throwing to try and get another throwing and move further down pitch. But we've got to, you've, we've got to be better than that. Any side's got to be better than that. And you were there, Joe, and you saw it. We passed ball from the back, nice. We played some good football, pass it through, get about 25, 30 yards out. It comes back to Brad Collins. I, I don't I don't just I don't understand the philosophy of our coach and what he wants us to do. And we've said game 10 games to see how he goes on shop. And we know further forward. And how can our players be a yard shorter in pace, slower in pace to second balls? They want everything black, they wanted it more. They definitely wanted it more. And I have to say, um, I also thought the Blackpool fans really did GM on as well. They're going to need the atmosphere as a newly promoted side. But 
One thing, uh, there's been a lot of criticism since Saturday for Marcus Shot, particularly. Um, so I thought, you know, we, we're not here to dig people out. You know, we love his team and we want them to do well. We want managers to do well. We want players to do well. We want, you know, kit man to do well. Any, any, everybody to do well at team. But sometimes you have to be, you know, call a spade a spade and, and talk about the issues. Um, Josh, I, I've got to be honest, it's, everybody gets stuff wrong. And, you know, I felt team selection, firstly, I think Toby Civic should have been the, in there. I think Gomez would have been better to get that transition from defence to midfield because we seem to really struggle with that. Didn't think Benson had his best game. Maybe it's because he's had a couple of weeks off. Um, and like Alan and Andy have pointed out, it just the style doesn't seem to be working. Apart from that first half against QPR, which was brilliant, that's the only time we've gone, wow, that was amazing. Rest of it, it's very, I've described it on Twitter as slow, sluggish and passive, really. Easy to play against. Well, you've hit it bang on there. What's the one thing we did against QPR, which we've not done rest at season, that first half, where we pressed them high, we won the ball back high, we created opportunities higher, higher up the pitch. And it's no it's no coincidence that that's his best 45 minutes. We played to his own strengths. And I think that's what... I think that's what we're missing. We've done a complete 180 on that season. I said at the start of the season, if Shop comes in and implements, keep, keeps high pressing, but mix it up, short and long passing, we'll be on to a winner. And we've we've done a low block. And the issue with implementing a low block is he's kept five at the back, which doesn't help you in transition. If you've got if if you've got a low block, then all you've got is three forwards who've probably come back. 12 upon rushing foot fullbacks to help cover it back. And you've left Corley on his own up top. And that's not playing to his skill set. Corley's at his best when he's got another striker next to him. He's, and I feel sorry for him in a way. Struber brought, brought him back in attacking midfield, which I thought it, suit, it suit, suited him, but he won as a, it just weren't in positions to score as frequent. And last season, Val played him anywhere across front three. And I thought he did a good job um, in any of them positions. And Fair play to him, but I don't think shop style suits the formation selection, the team selection. There's just there's just so many things at the minute which I think are, are big issues. I mean, you look at his in-game management three times. Um, QPR, when he brought on Halman Moon into midfield. Stoke carved us open in the same area consistently and never did anything to try and sort it. And Blackburn, when he went to Gomez and Hondemark in the middle, who've got a combined of six senior appearances. That's not going to do, do you any well in championship. You've got no experience. We've got a lack of experience across the team. But then when you couple it with the least experienced players in central midfield, that's not going to work. And we got overrun for that period of the game, which it did eventually change it. But I don't know if that will cost Gomez went off injured and he had to put Styles in there. So I think... For me, he's had 10 games now and we need to, we, there's nothing encouraging to see. There's nothing to get behind apart from that four, 45 minutes of QPR. It feels like that season where we clung on to the Fulham win for half a year. And so what you're like, saying yeah, is we just need to play Fulham and then we'll be right. We'll be right. We'll right. play Fulham and beat exactly one we're looking for. Clinging on to the Coventry victory, the only victory we've had. And we were lucky to get a three points against that. They were better side on that that day when we played them. So, honestly, truthfully, we're lucky to get three points. The only I've, game got to ask, I've got to ask, I've got to ask, gang, what do we think to his comments after the game, Marcus Shop? Because I'm going to be honest, I did. I, it burns me a little bit because I, I were upset on Saturday. We went to Blackpool. We love his team. We're going to support them, you know, until there we die, no matter whether they lose 10 on bounce, win 10 on bounce. You know, we had good times last season. I said on Twitter, this is a bit of a storm. We've got to stick with him. It, you know, we, yeah, we're going to be critical. We're going to because we want to see them improve. We're going to say this needs to be better. So we try and, you know, tell them what we want to see as fans because you know we're entitled to his opinions, just as we want you to have your opinions on the show. But end of the day, we have got to stick with him. But at the same time, I'm I'm concerned with what Marcus Shop said there at end because I feel I felt upset for players. I felt upset for players. They looked really dejected at the end of that game. You know, they came over to fans, gave us a clap, and a very minority of fans were quite... I heard some comments, and I didn't really approve of them, to be honest. Like, yes, OK, you've paid your money, you've travelled all that way. Yeah, you're not going to be happy that we've lost 1-0. Yeah, you can say we didn't play well, but to actually sort of have a go at a couple of players when they're coming over to applaud you, I didn't like that. There was a couple of comments. But Marcus shot post-match interview, just to get back to that. He didn't seem to take any responsibility for the defeat. I didn't like that, guys. I'm going to be honest. I didn't like that. 
I, I don't mind if he comes after we've lost one nil and you know it's it's you lose games, you have bad days, it don't always go to plan, whatever you get it wrong. But I've got much more respect. Someone comes out and just says, you know what? Maybe I got the team a bit wrong today. Maybe we had an off day, but you know, we'll, we'll you know, a bit of motivation. We'll, we'll come back and we'll, we'll be a lot stronger or whatever. Or, you know, he just seemed to, I saw his comments and it seemed a little bit like he would basically, again, he's mentioned, he you know, like ownership, of, Joe. He needs to take ownership. It's he's not the leader, isn't he? He's the, he's the man. He has to be he, the man who comes out the and says, he, you know, he, he sets the style out. He gets the board out and sets where each player has to go. What got me on Saturday as well is when they broke with two defenders and there were five Blackpool players running on. Any other time, team, had, had, had stuffed us. But last season, we'd have players busting a gut to get back to help, and they weren't. That's, that's the demoralising thing. Players aren't... <clears throat> I don't know what I don't know. I can't put a finger on it, but they just weren't. We want to see our side 110%. If lose at 110%, we're behind them. On Saturday, it were it were lackluster. Oh, it looked like they had no confidence at some points. On 70 minutes, I sat there and I know we created a few chances towards the end, and you know, we could have probably nicked a point. We wouldn't have deserved it, but we could have nicked a point. But I sat there and I just thought, I don't think we're gonna score because they just look so down, they look so dejected. At this, and whether it were just Blackpool had a great atmosphere and they were a bit intimidating, whether it's just it weren't happening for him or whether it's style, I don't know. But I just felt for him to be honest. I actually felt really sorry for him at the end of the game. I thought, come on, boys, pick your sends up. We've got to go again. And I were hoping that shot were going to get a rallying call in press, but it just it just didn't happen. And I want to see that from him. I want to see him get passionate and say, come on, let's have it. Like Val, I know we couldn't want to compare him to Val too much, but you know what I mean. Give it some passion. There were three thousand fans there. Joe behind them, including your two, three thousand. So that that tells you something. They were all there behind them. I I, I don't. I, I'm like you. I don't approve and don't. People pay the money. They've got the choices. I don't think I've never seen a player that plays better by being booed or by being called names and, and told how, how rubbish they are and how poor they are. Nobody's ever played better doing that unless it's from an opposition uh, fan. But from your own fans, it, it's never improved anybody. So. I, you know, pe people will do what they want, but I, I, I don't personally, I don't personally like that. I also think a bad workman blames his tools as well. He'd make a great politician at this minute, you know, but bl blame everybody else but himself. It's not me, you know. We haven't got a fuel shortage. It's just that people are buying fuel. The game fuel. What's that all about? There wouldn't be a fuel shortage if they stopped buying fuel. You know, it, you can't just keep blaming somebody else. You know, you know. I love how you managed to squeeze the breaking news in there about the fuel. <laughs> Topical as and well. Topical. We're not even playing Huddersfield. I just think, you know, get get a, get a grip of yourself and come out and be honest. Don't just, you know, I, I, I understand that people were upset because he just beggared off down the tunnel. I don't know because I weren't there. But I, I just, I just, I, I don't think it's very good at all blaming other people. These are young lads. He's not a young lad. These are young lads. They're not going to play better. But if, it, if things start going wrong, they don't know what to do to change it. That that comes from him. People keep saying, you know, they said it with Alan, what have you? They're saying it now. There's no plan B. Well, at this minute, to, to me personally, there don't even seem to be a plan A. I, I can't see any of it. Yeah. And can I just say, Reds, and you'll be the same as us watching this, we all want Marcus Shop to do amazing. We want him to be as good, if not better, than Valerian. We want to see that. So it's not a personal thing. It's just we, we just want him to do better. And I think it's just frustrating us at the minute. I don't want to see him get sacked. I know that some fans are calling for it. We've seen the comments. You know, we see him. But, Josh, I, I want him to do well. I hope he does turn it round. I really do hope he, he turns it round. But we, I think his attitude, maybe not attitude, but something needs to change. Something does need to change. No, you're right. I think I, I think you're right when you say attitude. Um, this team, the age in which we've got these players, they don't need someone coming out and then not taking any blame. You come out, you take it on chin. Just even if it's in public, you just come and take it on chin. And if in private, is is into them, then fair. But you can't come out in press and and blame it on them when the the they're only young lads. There's there's not many players that can like take can take it on chin like that, and you've got to be a certain type type of character for that to light light a fire in your belly. And I don't think that's the right way to go about it um, with this group of lads that we've got at the minute. Um, but for me, I'm the same as you. I want him to do well, but it at the minute I feel like when Stendhal in charge and 
he'd got his style of how he wanted to play and he stuck to it regardless of what actually happened on the pitch. I think that's what I think that's what's happening at the minute with Shop. I think he's got his style that he wants to play and he's trying to make it fit around these players and not playing to their strengths. And you've got Val last season who came so so what he's working with and went, right, this is how we're gonna play. Get balls far forward, run after it, put them under pressure, we'll win it, we'll play percentages. And and it works. We play to our strengths. We've got a young team. We can outrun most teams in this league because of natural fit fitness, stamina. We've got a young core, old players, older, more experienced players. Yeah, they might they, they might be better te- technically, but you're not running after us for 90, for ninety minutes. You're not going to like the pressure we're going to put put you under. And this style of play just doesn't suit. It doesn't it don't fit the players which we've got for me. And I think that's the big issue is that we're ten games in, and as Al said, we're no closer to finding a solution. And for me, Josh, we've got lack of leadership off the pitch and lack of leadership on it. There's nobody there when it's going wrong to say, come on, calm down, we can do all this. We need somebody to get around young lads and say, come on, you're all right. Well, there's nothing on that pitch. To, uh, and off the pitch, it, it's not animated or anything, is it? it, it, it it's, it's, I don't know, I don't get it. Fans want to see passion. And at the moment in our team, we've no passion. I agree it, and disagree with that in, in respect, because I think we've only lost Mowit from last season, who obviously was his captain and is experienced. And... There's no way, well, there's no way I believe that he had that much influence over the team. I think a lot, a, a lot of it came from the sideline of Val constantly on at him, getting into him, encouraging him, and I think that's what that's what we need to fill that void of lack of experience. When like when when we are under cost, you need someone there. Calm it down, lads. Just sit, just ca- calm down. We'll be all right. We'll get through this next five ten minutes. And I don't think we've got that a minute. I think that's what Val were really good at. Um, and I think that's why, I think that's probably one of his big issues at the minute. Can I just say uh, credit to from, from Saturday anyway, to Mikel Hellick for getting an EFL team at weekend. I mean, Hellick come out of it way, way up there, didn't he? Hellick was, Hellick was solid. It, it, it didn't miss, miss much, Hellick. Uh, and that proves something that uh, we, we've got somebody in there. He is a Polish international, but we need more uh, on pitch uh, besides Hellick. Uh, to give it, give us all yeah. for the cause. Can we just also credit Brad Collins because, oh my gosh, you know, through all this, he's just been a worldy. I don't think we'd have, what is it, eight points on board? I don't think we'd have anything near that if he weren't so good. So fair play to Brad because we're, sometimes it's easy to, you know, we win as a team, lose as a team, all that, but Brad's been brilliant throughout and he made some class saves again just to give us a chance of getting something out of that game at weekend. So fair play to him. Hey, well, hey let's, what, before what we finish... The game out of it, Joe, what, what... The one good thing that came... came I've got football in 10 minutes, my second session. Get on with it. No, I'm, I'm going to slow time you so that you're going to be late. I'm doing it on purpose. I'm going to slow time you. Big I don't care, me downstairs. The show comes... For, the show must go on, John. I don't care. I really don't care. Right. The one good thing about... Well, two good things, and, you know, one's in dispute. For me, the one good thing is I didn't need any blood pressure tablets watching that because my blood pressure... Blood pressure were fine. The second thing, and I, I think you need to come clean. You said the good thing, the one good thing, were the fish and chips. And then Kev says fish and chips were poor and all. They were rubbish and all. So you know, yeah, you, well, can't, you yeah. can't bull up fish and chips and then have your dad sort you out like that. It's my fish good. and chips were fine. We're losing. Yeah, I thought mine was losing, uh, the, we, yeah. I, I know best fish and chip shop in Blackpool. Ours were fine. Right. Good. One last mention. Wayne Alson um, is um, doing his top round prediction competition. So, congrats to Wayne. We've got one game left of this one, which is Forest. So, get your predictions in. But remember, Reds, even if you're nowhere near on this one, we have a prize for the overall season. So, if you predict every single game of the season, you have got a much better chance of winning because people do forget. Uh, and we will be doing another competition as soon as this one's ended with Forest. So, get your Forest predictions on this show, or you can do it on tomorrow's show where we're going to have a Forest fan on Mr. Daw. Uh, so you can do that. And another thing on Wayne Alson as Wayne uh, is doing sober for October. Um, he's picked to eight time, haven't we, when we're bottom at league? I didn't think Alan's going to be doing sober for October anytime <laughs> soon, but, you know, uh, fair play to Wayne, raising money for uh, for charity. So, Wayne, um, drop your detail, drop details where our people can get involved below because you know I'll forget, mate. So there you go. You can book anyway, on. lads, do we still believe? If you can donate a few quid, lads, that'd be good. And last Do we still uh, believe we've the capacity to move up that league table? Oh, you see where I went there? 
Yeah, don't start with that. <laughs> Finish on a positive note. Well, I say a positive note. Finish on a slightly more upbeat note. Got to stick with him to Storm, lads. No, it's not nice at the minute, but can we beat Forest? What are we reckoning? What's his predictions? We'll do them tonight. I've decided we'll do them tonight so we can focus on talking about Forest Mr. Door tomorrow. Go on, Al. We're all slow timing you, Joe. We're, we're, we're all pondering and slowing you down. <laughs> oh, if so you don't hurry up, I'm not I getting hope. to Carlton, so just give me a quick one. A quick one. I hope there's some bounce back ability. I hope we can beat Forest. Uh, I'm going 2 0 Reds. I can't see that happening, but I'm still positive and got to go forward and, and think positive. But it might be that what's talking. Andy, <laughs> Al's clearly had too much to drink. Go on, Andy. Well, I think if Lyle Taylor plays, that's a penalty to them. So they'll score a penalty unless Brad saves it. So I, I, I think I think it'll be one all. Josh? 2 0 Forest. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, oh, Manchester is having an effect. I'll tell you <laughs> something. There, but is it I'll tell you something. There's only someone who's getting some points in that leaderboard, and it's none of yours. Let me tell you that. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be one with three points. Oh, by I, the way, Red, so I'm talking about that. Um, I've just, it's just reminded me that, Josh. We've set up Red all over on Twitter. So if you are on Twitter, it's Red all over BFC. If you want to at us on Twitter now, we've, we've set that up finally. Uh, Josh is sweating TikTok out, so we'll get that set up eventually so you can watch Josh doing TikTok dancers in his Barnsley shirt. I'm sure you all love that. <laughs> um, what am I going for? Leave it, Al. Leave it. Al, leave it. There's no fool like an old fool, Al. You know what? Don't, I'm don't thinking... being yourself, Al. Uh, sorry, is, is You're Al a legend, Al. I'm going to go, sports, I'm gonna go Smith, positive. Go you know how happy Clapper, I don't know why I'm doing this, Reds. I've no idea. 1 0 Barnsley. Oh, it's the art that kills you. Just put, just put, Andy, you, just put uh, Alan and Joe down for non Andy already, and uh, I'll have, I'll have Josh, three. Josh. Being a Barnsley I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what Josh. If you play like... 60 season, and we're always ever the optimist, aren't we? We're ever the optimist. Yeah. You've right. got to. It's, that's if the play like we played last time. Saturday, Josh. Just we remember, like we guys. We'll be lucky to get nil. It, it could always be worse, couldn't it? Remember them. I've seen some fans on Twitter. Some of your, some older guards saying to us, "You know, we're in Division Four, what uh, Division Four or whatever it was once." So always get worse, Red. So keep smiling and hopefully we can get a win. I nearly play. went out of the league as well. Yeah, all right, Al. I've got to wrap up now. And I've well, literally got to get in car and kick off. <laughs> get off then. Please. Right, bye then. <laughs> kicking off, Al. Al is kicking off. Scrap. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just get around. Al, Al. Hey, how do you know, Alan? I, I, I won a won a duel with Joe Lyman today, so don't. That's only the second time you've mentioned it. I'm it's sure. I don't think I've mentioned it. Second time. Only the second time in fifty. On the sea, on the seafront at Blackpool, uh, I was talking with uh, our head physio. There you go. I'll drop that. I won't no, mention him, but just the head physio. Anyway, Reds, before Alan name drops anybody else, give the show a like, subscribe if you've not already, uh, hit the bell so that you can find out when our content is coming. We'll have another show for you tomorrow ahead of Forest. Edgy. Edgy. Edgy.